Okay, good morning everybody. I'm in kind of in hot water because um, because one of the uh, develop, development, uh, work development um, tracks of Gaia humanism that I explained is homosexuality. And um, it really, it kind of has a lot of different uh, phases uh, and so far as reactions and attitudes there is anger there is um, confusion there is apathy there is um, and a lot of uh, um, lack of knowledge uh, there's ignorance and there's just a huge void of um, an area of humanity and, and human civilization that we have never really gotten a grip on and seen for what it is um, it's all understandable it, I mean easy to understand it all is capable of being understood um, but it's just a lot of explaining and people have to be willing to try to uh, to you know want to get a rather complex simple in its conceptual aspects but still it is complex and more so because it is a lot of it would be it's a reasoning that is constructed um, in, a, in, in a place in a void that doesn't exist um, and so I, I have to explain what is generally the, the structures of reasoning and manifestations that have occupied our thinking in human civilization regarding homosexuality f so that that void is so that people understand why there is so much void and why it can be uh, filled with um, with a finally understood um, concepts um, and the ways of going about uh, the homo human homosexuality uh, for what it is. Okay, I'm going to leave this little preface. Uh, right here, preface or preface, preface, Pre preface, preface, right here, and then I'm going to think a little bit about how I'm going to start. Good morning, everybody. <laughs> Although it's four o'clock for me <laughs> right now, but okay, I'll be right back. It's it's actually really hard to start talking about this because there are several places where things can start. In other words, there are several uh, general cultural social understandings and, and its family of discourses that have their roots on origin, um, um, I don't want to say philosophical, but um, start of basic essential source points. And so for example, if I said something because what I thought immediately is the, the, the grandfather of all beginnings as far as understanding the psychology, the sociology um, of humanity and our, our, our moral, um, you know, the things that produce our moral reactions and our, and our moral states and, and uh, expectations and so forth. And uh, I thought if I just say that, it's gonna immediately because I'm always anticipating what pe how people are gonna react, uh, what they're gonna deny, how it's gonna uh, not be seen for what it's trying to explain. Uh, I stopped myself and said, should I even, you know, where then? Where can one start? But you have to start there, and um, I will. And then I'm gonna stop again the video <laughs> to see how I proceed, but. The I, I've explained before that the, the human species, the human species governed by uh, its uh, collective survival, as per evolution, as per creation, um, is actually two genders in one single, in one single being. In other words, if you want to talk about the human being, you have to, you start by talking about its two genders, and so. Its completion and its integrity must always involve this relationship because at the very beginning, the first thing that is decided by nature is if it's going to be a male or a female. So 
Therefore, everything that, all repercussions and everything that stems out of that will have to lesser or greater degrees or some always have ways of, of referring to, to uh, this, um, not always needing to end there or start there, but you can always take it there. And so, uh, but aside from that, um, the governing forces will always be uh, related to or having to do with their um, with their union, with their complementation, with their integration, with how they relate to each other, these two genders. So it all starts with boy and girl, basically. Okay, now I'm going to pause to see how I continue from there. Okay, I know. I know, see. I'm. Over, I know how difficult it, it's going to be to accept or understand or, or see the relevance. But uh, continuing from the grand granddaddy of all beginnings for mankind, or the grandmom and dad. So, therefore, the first thing that will alert very, very profoundly, not always, not constantly, not consistently, certainly, but. Um, like I said, everything can be taken to th that place. The first thing that would alert, I suppose, then, um, the, that something is not in its place or that would be the reason for alerting that something is not in its place is something that affects the integrity or the joining of these two genders. In other words, it is natural for any man or woman in particular for men, and that may get explained a little bit later, when you perceive in the other that they're not quite, mm, there's something about their maleness which is not entirely uh, the way you sense. There's no logical explanation in this. Understand that we're talking about how the species was naturally created by evolution and creation. So we're talking about how I don't like to use the word wired, but how we have been built biologically by, by creation. Um, and in that context is what I'm saying. Not judging. There's no judgment in, in, in this category of discourse because we're talking about trying our best. I'm trying my best, but scientists also try their best to explain how we actually are. Though we make mistakes and scientists make mistakes, um, we are always talking about trying to describe what is already, what is, basically. And um, so it all kind of, everything can be, ex all the problems that, or all the situations that can then later be talked about regarding uh, homosexuality or the perception of weakness or of femininity or the opposite of uh, um, a man perceiving that a woman is not, you know, womanly enough for him, it all f finds its origins in this place of the mind that um, we probably may someday be able to explain very simply. Right now we struggle because when you utter those words that would attempt to explain that, we run into the world of explanations we have created like a crash. We crash into that. It, there's no harmony in even trying to get to finding the, the right words there. So, but basically it all has to do with this perception that, and, and that uh, s something in the opposite gender or in the same gender, because the same gender concerns you a great deal, especially men, because men's all about the building, the pushing forward of civilization, the the constructing of, of, um, of plans and, and, and the, the, the uh, did I say building of civilization already? Yeah. Um, and so, if somebody cannot is does not have the 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 manliness to pick up that beam and lay down those plans, it's of high concern to the quote unquote leader of the species. Um, okay, so uh, this is why homosexuality kind of is all so much about men because it it's like. Um, it really rubs us the wrong way that we can't count on another male because you need, like we said, there's a, we all, everything, all understanding starts from the collective. You need another 
to make sense of your plans, to to bounce off, see if your logic is correct. You always need somebody else. Alone, nothing can be built. You can you can come out with come up with the best idea or understanding of the world, but if you don't have another person that says, "I understand you and I see what you're saying," just to start, it will mean nothing to humanity. So we there's always another needing to be involved. Um, and uh, okay, so it all kind of starts with homosexuality. It all kind of starts there. It starts in the perception that the other gender is not quite, you know, um, the male, maybe just in, in the superficial ways, by the way you sound. Um, I don't know. I This happens to me, for example, when I hear myself speak Spanish. I don't want to indulge in myself because it's not about me, this, but um, there are some differences w for bilingual people in, in how you sound. And... Um, I think that for some strange reason, I've never learned the the real, just plain male intonations of, in Spanish, and I kind of sound more like all the the, the girls, the friends of my sister. Well, more like the the girls that was easy to hang out with, uh, or my one of my buddies, my best friend, this girl, that, and so the inflections, uh, and so, anyways. Um, this is already going into something that is about accepting how you came out and and that immediately clashes into beliefs about accepting yourself or accepting homosexuality um, so it's very it's a very difficult thing to to do to talk about this uh, and it's not so difficult just because it it concerns oneself because the only difficulty there is that you would not be really so much respected you would be and it all kind of is still referring to what I just explained uh, when you sound like you know gay basically uh, men tend to immediately in men and women there's an automatic um, sort of ah eh, you can't really it's not something you can rely on and it all goes back to the necessity of how uh, we must always stay together. We must join. Uh, so the, the the alarm goes off that uh, with that that one cannot complete the species with its with its complementing gender. It's all very very primitively subconscious, and as you can see, just if you, if you kind of get what I'm saying. It would be very difficult to talk about in the way we have come to understand this subject today in the West, in particular. And so it is difficult to talk about. Uh, it is difficult to tape. For me, it seems to be a little. I feel that it's. I can feel it. I can sense. I can see reactions. It's harder to be taken seriously and spent more seriously in Spanish. In English, I don't. You know, I, I, I may it may be I may be perceived. So it's all about content here when it comes to these dissertations of mine, and, the, and what I'm saying, and writing it properly. So wait, uh, so I got those two things out. It's already 14 minutes. I don't want to I don't want this to be long. I got two basic uh, ideas out um, at the the very source, the perp the causers, the perpetrators of of uh, of what will later become a whole host of different social situations for which we have come to explain and describe and solve, resolve, and attempt to heal. Um, obviously, and I say obviously because the world is not really not, it's not going, we're not going the right way about this. Um, you know, it's leading, what has it led to? It has led to uh, children being um, uh, sort of uh, funneled or cajoled or encouraged or or celebrated in their mutilating their physical bodies to try to shape them into the opposite gender because they ha they come with an idea that was formed by parents and society um, already planted and seeded in their imagination and they will try to reshape the body from from the outside uh, you know, it's absurd. It makes no sense to try to 
try to make it and or make it look like the the gender that supposedly they were supposed uh, they were meant to be born as and we're also um we're also uh you know raising children two things in that second point civilly civilly we are uh depriving the human rights of a child to have a mom and a dad it's so funny because people <laughs> were so desperate to try to justify this this form that we have given um these new ways that immediately the first reaction is says he could have been raised by an abusive mother. <laughs> you know it's so obviously trying to justify uh, something that is against something that is not being said the point would be to find a good mom and a good father for that adopted child for that child to be adopted what makes people assume that the they randomly may be hax murderers, uh, the people that adopt that child. So the logic of defense kind of gives it away. You know that society is going the wrong way. Um, and it's, we're doing this because we're bent on saying that two men can be together and what we traditionally must come to, the marriage must exist. <laughs> we must have marriage in society, so we must be, so we're all conditioned uh, f to think uh, people talk about programming and stuff like that well there you go <laughs> the same people that were talking about programming to make their cause are actually the sub the, the victims of programming themselves they have and we have enforced now the dispute arrives on uh, in matrimony uh, you know if two guys want to be together for life and have sex with each other they're not harming anybody you know the we can it is in my view it should be accepted that the rest of society may continue to change and start talking about well how are you educating little boys and little girls that are seeing you live together what are they gonna you know but all in all they're still just you know to themselves now the moment they um, uh, take a life and say you're gonna have gay parents it becomes a civil issue and it's so amazing that the United States <laughs> the United States with all our, our sort of championing uh, this is the great irony happening now in the West anyways and um, you can complete my sentences I think <laughs> I think I'm doing a good job at that at hinting the completion of sentences so um, these two uh, areas indicate that obviously how we're going about it is the wrong way so we can't just take something like we can't take the leaning tower of pizza and push it from from the top we have to go to the foundations and see well it must be because we never either had a good footing or we didn't uh, and and a wrong footing could be a sort of extremist right wing a man is a man a woman is a woman you know uh, could also is also the right the wrong footing <laughs> right for how I just said it but um, not in how we have gone about that idea um, how we have gone about that idea has obviously led to excesses repressing women and when women uh, the feminist movement said uh, instead of saying we want you to treat us with free freedom and good and kindness but with freedom not with repression they went and said we have to be equal and that just started the tower leaning like that that way because equal meant I too want to hold a gun and kill another child if I have to that's what it lead, led to um, it went against we never had this perfect um, uh, departing from two different making one and how is one and how is the other how is one and how is the other how is one and how is the other leading to two equal beings two equally important because the two make the one um, but poetically very different and very wondrously complementing we've never had that sophistication we've had some hints at it we've been poetic about the opposite gender but it hasn't arrived to our sciences and to our institutions and how we order civilization and society um, how we work together how we are interested in the how the other one will be different and how they say things 
um, we haven't had that world um, anyway so I think this is a good start maybe because if I start going into homosexuality more more so uh, it will just go into a big space and I'll know where to go so this is a good beginning right here um, oh no because right it's not I'm not doing justice to why I said I was making the video which is to explain well which is to introduce how it will attempt to explain why it's one of the developmental axes of um, of Gaia humanism which there are three uh, the the uh, the, the tragic error of uh, incarceration, uh, you know, killing our potential to heal ourselves by looking for who to blame, and then this barbaric kind of um, mental institutional mentality that the world has always had, actually, because we, we seem to reach a limit, and at the, it's either the dungeon or it's a punish, hang him, or whatever, put him in jail. We don't seem to realize that if through society came the affliction, the misguidance, the miseducation, even you know, the, 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 the contamination in the mother's womb, let's say, it's before birth. It is through society that that person can uh, be helped in its natural tendency to want to, because all of life, you take a little tree, you push it down, and as it continues to grow, it will want to go back up again. Nobody wants to hurt another. Nobody wants to be a pariah in society, cast it into a cave. We all want to belong because, like I said, first governs the collective. And so that's why we have intuitively known this and made rehabilitation, try to eliminate guns in, in, in some countries and, and, and not have in Norway, they have a, a ceiling of 30 years in jail. Why do we do these things? Because somehow we kind of know that natural redemption exists in the brain and it behooves us to try to develop it scientifically in human sciences and make it a reality so that we stop killing our potential to recuperate by slamming people in jail okay and so the other governing um access was war uh oof, i don't even know where to start there but so homosexuality war and uh, obesity i was an excess of of consumption of wanting needing more uh, or being used to being getting comfortable with ex excessive uh, consumption I don't know that's the, that's the latest one but I know that there's something there it was originally three homosexuality war and incarceration but I realized that um, another great affliction of humanity is we're all more and more people are getting fatter uh, in more countries and so that must be one of our big sufferings too. I don't know how I'm going to label that or, or, or call it uh, one of the axes of uh, developmental, identifying the pain and the suffering and developing analysis, why it happened, what it means, why it's hurting, and what to do and how to heal it. That's the axes. But I was just going to explain how Gaia Humanism was going to look at uh, homosexuality. And um, and I kind of am stumped because I, I covered such an important part of um, of the uh, source important very important uh, fundamental source aspects those two aspects that I covered in the beginning that I think I'm going to change my mind and not explain how to uh, ideas that have to do with understanding. Um, how to deal, maybe, I don't have no clue. It's all growing and changing. Um, I have basic ideas, but every day I, I realize, well, that would never really float. That would never really, because there's kind of this would happen and, and you know, society or other men would always react kind of this way towards that kind of situation. So it's still growing. But the basic idea was that we culturally, just like we culturally today have gay pride and or you know or um, you know chase somebody to a corner and hang them from a tree <laughs> in some other places but just like we culturally explore, express ends up being our culture ends up is is the sort of the the eventual fruit the ex, the fruitful expressions of what we have educated society to believe and so we end up making more relaxed cultural everyday living expressions of what we understand and so the ultimate 
therefore I can see it at the at the at the result instead of the process uh, right now for for right now and it would be to have a culture that gets that um, it occurs in nature because of how we develop because of how this is would be the difference not it not nature's plan but because of how we raise our own so it's taking accountability for the occurrence of homosexuality in people's lives which we have never done as in human civilization and yet we are socially uh, accountable even even if um it's really really was coming you know it was coming in a how you say that how you say this when it was um coming from far before from far behind uh, there's a saying i can't come up with it right now uh it was ruling already even before maybe um uh, before gestation perhaps having nothing to do with uh maternal hormones and stuff like that it still is uh, in my theory in my belief or the how my theory or how this theory because i'm not alone i don't believe in this but how it is explained it is we're talking about susceptibility uh susceptibility to be affected a certain way by tendencies to being to resulting through being affected a certain way by effects of society and uh, things that will come later in other words it is not nature creation's original intent to produce a gender that will most optimally be complemented by its own gender it's something that occurs and so this results in a new form of cultural comprehension that doesn't punish doesn't look at the individual thinks of homosexuality as something that's happening to the species and therefore uh, it will give society an opportunity to see well obviously if we're having more and more guys that are seeking love to, to complete something by continuing to love their same gender it's we have problems in how we're uh, how we're uh, functioning socially and how we're treating each other socially and our culture and messages and what we're teaching and the problem is the collectives it's, it's a side so like homosexuality would be more of a symptom rather than an activity um, and it can still at the at the base underneath you know this different way of culture um, being okay with it but it would be okay with it for what it is now that would still mean that um, a prob there's a problem there kind of a problem that um, men will always kind of think at, in the best of circumstances they will think too bad <laughs> that's the you know because we can't escape that we already started with only two genders and so there will always be some part that right now we're totally repressing and then we have people who are not taught to uh, go by western our Western cultural belief uh, in, of homosexuality will just express anger. And in our own culture, we have a lot of people that kind of say, uh, I can't accept it, it's strange, it's weird, as long as you don't touch me, this kind of thing, who are being repressed to shut up. So this whole aspect of um, that doesn't go away and that we're trying so hard to to force and quash and redefine and re-educate is a result of something that is unchangeable in the species. It could never be um, anything else but two. It can never be three if it's always going to be two kind of thing at the beginning. Um, I don't know how better to explain that right now. But so we must find a way to... We would result... We would maybe there isn't a happy Disneyland kind of perfect society where men and women who are um, uh, choosing to have homosexuality experiences as a life as a as a as a tra transcurrence of life um, are in heart and soul really perfectly identically seen because our biology will not allow it, but we would have 
compared to what everything else that we have been uh, as a world, we would have a culture. It's sort of like, you know, if you can imagine how we have best friends who are drunks or smoke addicts or something. Uh, we, I don't know, this is very difficult to talk about because people immediately think, there, you're saying it's a problem. Well, you know, it's all new, and the end result is that it would be better than we it's ever been. So to getting to that better than it's ever been, unfortunately, requires going in the face of the storm because of how we have come to believe it is today. But if you can just imagine how kind and how inclusive we are and how upholding and supportive of all the person's talents and even we will give somebody who has a drinking problem a responsibility with our kids even um you know uh sometimes some people not <laughs> a lot of people won't <laughs> but <laughs> thank goodness but you know what i'm trying to say is that there is a possibility of having a culture where oh, it's not such a big deal it's not optimal and we still you know perhaps one day but it's not we will have a society where we're so perfect and and, and this is generous intelligent wise social institutional expressions and how we're raising our kids and how we treat each other boom oh my God, there's no more sexual de homosexual desire it will always be a capacity it will always be a capacity that can be enjoyed if you make yourself do it if you just put it in your mind that I'm gonna, you know, we're gonna get naked and we're gonna rub our bodies together, it's always a biological cap uh, capacity. But maybe someday, as a society, it won't be something that um, that uh, will sort of be pushed strongly by the hearts and the minds of people, and it will be a result of having had come to understand it as something that occurs to the species. And so, the cultural expression of homosexuality may always be there uh, because we just simply will always have some people perhaps that even though they were perfect they just want to be a little you know or there's also another force that has to do with um, with how two males experience sexuality and what it does to their uh, psyche there's also at the same time a counter force which never goes away <laughs> which never goes away but you know they may decide to indulge in that even though uh, they first had to get over a hump or something which is not so different to the process of a lot of people going into homosexual lifestyles in today's Western society um, okay so that's basically an introduction to the incomplete starting of how that access in, of uh, homosexuality is a scene um, in Gaia humanism. Okay, have a good day. Thanks for listening. Sorry it went on so long. So long, so long. <laughs>